Okay, so today's daf yomi is Yevamos daf nun hey, and all the Torah study that we do this week, we're studying in memory of Dr. Philip Rodkin and the Torah study is sponsored by Aviva and Mordechai Weissman. So let us begin with on the bottom of um, on the bottom of 54B, five lines on the bottom. The Mara says, Haditnan. That which we learned, that which we learned, or we come to it a Mishnah on the Tzadi Vav Amaraf, Amrullah Mesa Ishtachaf. They say to him, Your wife died. And you know there's a prohibition to marry your wife's sister while you're alive, but after you're, but while your wife is alive, but after your wife dies, you're allowed to marry her sister. So they say that your wife has died on that basis, Nasa Chosa Meavia, he marries her paternal sister. And then Mesa, and then the paternal sister dies, Vinasa Achosa Meima, and then he marries that paternal sister, his maternal sister, i.e., so she has no relation to the first initial wife because she's the initial wife's paternal sister's maternal sister. And Mesa, and then that maternal sister dies, Vinasa Achosa Meavia, and he marries that maternal sister's paternal sister. And Mesa, and then she dies, and he marries that fourth wife's uh, maternal sister, and then he finds out that the first wife was still alive, so he's allowed to marry, he stay remaining married to her, also to the third sister, to the third wife, because she was only the maternal sister of the of the second wife and the second and the second wife is only the maternal the paternal sister of the first wife and also the fifth one who potros are saying he also exempts if he does even with any of them he exempts their co-wives but also but the second and the fourth one he can't remain married to them because they are the sisters of his wives and the and the bia with with either with any of them the consummation with any of them does not exempt their co-wives because they're not really married. But let's say when he had the bia with the second woman, it was after the first woman had after his first wife had died. Then mutter Then he's going to allow it to be remain married to number two and number four. Who poetry are saying, and their co-wives will be exempt. And he will remain prohibited to three and five because they're the sisters of two and four. So we see from here on the top of 55a, Alma Chos Ishto So we see from here that uh, that the that the sister that your your wife's sister is whether or not she's your maternal paternal sister or a maternal sister, Asura. She's going to be prohibited because she's the wife of the sister of your wife. I mean, no, and what's the source for that? So it says the Gemara, Yalav Me'achosa. We learn out from Me'achosa, from his own sister. Me'achosa, Be'menahav, Be'menahim. Just like his own sister, she's prohibited to be with, whether or not she's paternal sister or a maternal sister. So too, Avkan, Be'menahav, Be'menahim. So too here also, whether or not it's a paternal sister, or maternal sister. Mar says, Valeo me Dodosa. Why doesn't he learn it out from his own aunt, who is the wife of his father's brother? But it's only if it's a paternal brother. Why don't we learn it out? Why don't we say it's only prohibited if it's his paternal, uh, paternal, if it's his father's paternal brother's wife and not his father's maternal brother's wife? Why don't we say also here too by it, his wife's paternal sister, not maternal sister. So the Gemara says, It's more logical to learn out from his own sister, from the from his own sister, which is paternal and maternal. She can krove atzmi krove atzmi, because both of those cases are relatives on their own without requiring a betrothal. And so therefore, so to his wife's sister, in the case where it's a relative on their own without requiring a betrothal. The Gemara says, Adar Abba, just the opposite of me, dodo so Learn it out from the ant, she came davar al yedei kedushim, davar al yedei kedushim, because they're both from betrothals, and his wife is betrothed in. El me'eshe sach yal fidon. No, so the Gemara says it's better to learn it out from your brother's wife. The she came davar al yedei kedushim who create krovei atzma. So therefore, we're saying learn out um, 
that there's a prohibition to be with your your brother's wife from there because there it's your brother's if it's your paternal brother's wife or maternal brother's wife, and that is because that's something that has this combination of both betrothal and also its own rel it's a relative that comes on its own, i.e., your brother. So the verse says, "Eishes ach kufe minolan." We're on fifty-five a, around ten lines from the top. Eishes ach kufe minolan. Your brother's wife. Uh, your brother's wife itself, how do we know, how do we know indeed that, that your brother's wife is prohibited to you, whether it's your paternal brother or maternal brother? Gemara says, Detanya, we learn this out from the Bryce, and the Bryce says, it says in the verse, and we read this in yesterday's parasha, Ervas it says, the nakedness of your brother's wife, you're not allowed to reveal. That means whether she's your paternal, whether he's your paternal brother's wife or maternal brother's wife. Maybe it's only your paternal brother's wife. Where says Vidinu, and wouldn't it be logical to say this? Because you're liable here, and you're liable by your own sister. Just like your own sister. Just like your own sister, you're liable if she's your paternal sister or your maternal sister. Afkan So to hear also, you're going to be liable whether it's your paternal brother's wife or your maternal brother's wife. Just right. Use the same verse and say the same thing. Or right. We're doing it. This a lot of this is some of this is a repetition of the arguments that we did yesterday. Some of it is, and the Gemara is analyzing. It, but we had tried to do this yesterday, and then we rejected it in favor of the Hakesha of Rabbeinu Yonah. So now we could come back and use these verses something else. The Gemara is going to bring up like how can we do this and. And yesterday we used it for something else. The Gemara is going to discuss that. Or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe you're, you're liable by your brother's wife, and you're by, liable by your father's brother's wife. Madodoso, just like by your father's brother's wife, it's It's a paternal brother, and not a maternal brother. Maybe here also. Maybe also here, paternal brother and not a maternal brother. So let's see which ones it's more similar to. Done in Krove Atmo, me Krove Atmo. So learn out from your father, from your own relatives, i.e., your, your sister to your brother's wife. The Altochiach Todaso, she Krove Av. And don't learn it out from your, bro, your father's brother's wife, which is the relative through your father. Or perhaps just the opposite. Done in Dover, Shai Dei Kedushin, me Dover, Al Yedei Kedushin. Or else just the opposite. Learn out something that comes about through a betrothal. From something that comes about through betrothal, i.e., your brother's wife from your father's brother's wife, and though we're not from your sister, because there's no there's no prohibition there. Uh, there's no excuse me, betrothal there. So so don't run it out from your own sister to your to your brother's to your brother's wife. So it says in the verse, she is the erva of your brother, which means the word he. Whether it's paternal or maternal brother. And maybe in both cases, it's talking about your paternal brother's wife. The fact that it says this verse twice, this prohibition, means to say, the uh, so we're saying, the beginning of the verse and the end of the Pasuk is, are both talking about, are both talking about whether or not it is your your paternal brother's wife, one is talking about a situation where your paternal brother has children uh, with her while he's alive, and one is where he has no children with her while he's alive. Mar says, well, no, if, if she has no, uh, if she has no children with him while he is alive, then so how do we know that the, the, there is no prohibition there? Midravuna not that we discussed in yesterday's daft where Ravuna taught out where we said he learned out the prohibition of your brother's wife when she has no children while he's still alive. Let's say they got divorced. He learned that out yesterday from the fact that it says Nidahi. So therefore we don't need the end of the verse to teach us that. And maybe, so again, maybe both parts of the verse are teaching us this prohibition of your, your brother's, your paternal brother's wife. 
And Chada the Yesha Banam Chayivah. One is when she has children from him, in which case she's prohibited to you. The Chada the Yesha Banam Lachar Mises Bawa. And one is the prohibition after he's dead. If she had children, if he had children with her, then she, he remains prohibited. She remains prohibited. So the Gemara says, no. Yesha Banam Lachar Mises Bawa Tuchakra. We don't need a verse for that if they had children together. Why? Me the Amarach Mana. Shame of Banam Uter. So the fact that Torah says if she has no children, if he has no children, that she's permitted a Yeshua Banam Asur. That implies that if that if she had children, she's prohibited. Maybe it means that if he has no children with her, he's prohibited to the world. She remains prohibited to everybody else in the world, but he's allowed to do Yibam with her. But if she has children, then she's permitted to everybody else, but she's also permitted to him through Yibam. Or inami, or maybe banim, or maybe if she has no children, mitzvah, then it's a mitzvah for him to do yibam with his brother's widow if he has no children. But yesh banim, but if he has children, rishus, he's allowed to do uh, yibam. Or inami, or maybe there's another possibility. In banim, uh, in if he has no children, he's allowed to marry her. Yesh banim lo, and but if she has if she has children with him. He's not allowed to marry her, but it's not a prohibition. I say, I say, but it's a positive commandment not to marry her. Because so therefore, for that reason, because of cross Reno, that's why in this, even though it says in last week's parasha, you're not allowed to marry your brother's wife. In this coming week's parasha, parasha's kadoshim, that's why there's another verse which says, Ervas Achiv Gila. It says, the nakedness of your brother you have revealed. And from this extra verse we learned. That your brother's wife, who has children after the death of her husband, is prohibited to you, and it's a punishment from Kares. So the Gemara says, well, maybe the Ema is af mina aim ka is af mina af. Or maybe a maternal brother is like a paternal brother, and ma is af mina af, af misus bawa shara, just like we do yibum in a case of a paternal brother's wife, maybe so too. Af is af. Maybe even would also be by a maternal brother's wife. We know it's not the case, but the Gemara is entertaining the possibility. Amakra, he. The verse states, the verse states, he, which means that the prohibition of your brother's wife, uh, your maternal brother's wife, remains at all times. And so therefore, that's the prohibition that your maternal brother's wife is never allowed to. It's only your paternal brother's wife that is okay through Yibam. So the Gemara says, Achoso, the cause of Bakari Samoy. How come in Parashas Kedoshim, in the Samoy's Parsha, how come it says that if you're with your sister, it says in the verse, it says in the verse, Ki koa sheri asem koa toa, don't say, Elo menechasan nefashos, I'm so sweet, caravan mom. And then it also lists out specifically the, 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 the prohibition of being with your with your own sister. We could have learned it out from this, from the general prohibition of Kari. So why does it say it specifically uh so the custom of Kari Samoy? Gemara says, look at the Rabbi Yochanan. So why does it say it both in general and also in specific? So the 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 it's to teach us like Rabbi Yochanan taught, like Rabbi Yochanan taught the following. Hold on. Like it teaches the following. Shem asen kulam be'elam achas five akol achas v'achas. That's you did all the arayos, all the sexual prohibitions that are listed in the Torah, and you did it thinking one mistake that they were all permitted. You're going to be liable on every single one. For Rabbi Yitzchak, Amar Kol Chayv Ekrisos Bechalha, Are you Lama Yatsa Kares Vachosa Waduna Bekares Lula Bemalkos? And according to Rabbi Yitzchak, who said that the Torah. A reason why the Torah says again by about your sisters to teach us that even you made a even though you made a general warning about the prohibitions of kares um, that you would get lashes you don't get lashes that you get kares and, and this teaches us that all of the prohibitions of kares are included uh, are in the general principle of lama yatsi kares bachoso and what, to teach us why is it specified by the sister laduno to tell us. Bikaris Loba Malchus, that by their sister you only get Karis and not Malchus. So if that's the case, that, that which the Torah says about your sister is the Chalik. It's to tell us, it's to tell us that you're going to be liable on every single one. So if that's the case, Minal and Adam's Rabbi Yitzhak know this law. So the Gemara says, 
Dafka way that we shove in Udas Tumasa, it says it in the verse in Leviticus, which we read yesterday, that we shove in Udas Tumasa, Lotsikra, the woman, in her Nidat Tumasa, you're not allowed to come close. In the words that we shove are extra, and this teaches us, you're liable for every single violation. So the Mar said, Dodaso, the Kasa, Rahmana, Aririm, you, the way we read this, uh, the, the, the verse where it says by your aunt, that's we're going to read this in next week's parasha. So Dodaso, the Kasa, Rahmana, Aririm, you, why in the situation where you're with your father's uh, brother's, your, your father's paternal brother's wife, it says that they will be Aririm, means to say that they will be punished with Karis. Why does it need to specify? It could have learned it out from the general principle of Karis. Mara says, Likid Raba, that this we're going to learn out like Raba taught. To Raba Ramik Sid, Raba, through two verses against each other. One verse states, Aririm you, and one verse states that they will be Aririm, and then the next verse states, Aririm Yamusu, and it states, so it states in, in um, it states in, one verse, Aririm Yamusu, and then the next verse, it says, Aririm Yiyu. So why is this the case? Okay, said, Yeshlo Banim. So, so the Gemara is telling us what's going to be the punishment of, uh, uh, of Kare. So the Gemara explains, if they have children when they sin, Kovan, then the punishment is they're going to have to bury their children. Eno Banim, if they have no children, Ola Hariri, they're going to go without children for their lives. So, and they need to write that they will be Aririm and that they will die Aririm. Because of Rahmana Aririm, because if the Torah just stated that they will be Aririm, then I would have said, Havamina that, that, that only those children that they had before they sinned will die. But the ones, who, the ones they were born after that they would not be punished with death. Because of Rahmana Aririm Yamusu. Because of Rahmana, and if the Torah states, and if we just said that, that they will die, I will say only those children that were born from after their sin. Aval, the ones, so, but the ones who were born prior to that, I would think would not be, would not be stricken with this punishment. So we say, we see, we need both. So now the Gemara wants to go, since we discussed, the Gemara goes back to what we discussed yesterday, the laws of Hayara, Ara, Without being overly explicit, is the the, the Gemara wants to know the, the source for the idea that the, just even the initial uh, um, penetration, you're going to be liable for the prohibition without even having the completion of the sexual act. So the Gemara had said, what's the source for that? That earlier the Gemara um, brought in the position of Ula, and now the Gemara wants to know by by all that we had discussed it yesterday, just in with respect to uh, uh, who had asked the question, the Gemara wants to know how it's like this by all the prohibitions of the Torah, by, by all prohibitions, by Chayve Krisus and death by court, that, that we had learned yesterday from the Hekish of Rabbeinu Yonah that they compare all the, all the prohibitions are compared to Nida. So the Gemara says, well, fine, but, but that is by the prohibitions of Nida, but they are the Chayve Laverman hour. Let's say it's just a regular prohibition. How do we know that it's also from the moment of Heara? That that's where you're going to have liability. The Gemara says, "Me the Goli Rachmana Shich Vazera." So that from the fact that the Torah discusses Shich Vazera, Gabe Gabe Shifchas Harufa, Shifchas Harufa. Rashi's approach is if there is a woman who's a Canaanite slave and she's betrothed to a Hebrew slave to a Jew who's a slave, then the liability in that situation uh, that that is. And and another and another Jew who was who who basically was adulterous with this shifa harufa that there the prohibition is from seed and not from heara mikal chay ve'lavin ve'ara so we see from here that all other prohibitions are with heara. Mar says other just the opposite midigali rachmana heara bechay ve'krisus from the fact that the Torah says heara. By all other prohibitions, by by kares, we call the chayve rabin the gemara Doesn't this teach us that by regular prohibitions, it should be with the completion of the sexual act, and not just with aara? Amar Ravashi, so Ravashi says in Cain, kra The Torah could have been could have been completely um, 
could have, the Torah be, could have been completely quiet by the Shifcha Charufa. And for the fact that it says by Shifcha Charufa that the seed is required, you see from all the other prohibitions, it's with just simple Hayara, just the initial uh, Ha'ara. So the Nur says, Ha'ara the Chayve Lavin the Kuhuna Amino. And how do we know by well, the, the people who the Kohen, the women who the Kohen is not allowed to be with? How do we know that the the, the liability comes from hey ara me no one so the says asya kicha kicha that's learned out from this kizera shava of kicha kicha okay fine well the gemar says the chayve asya me no and how do we know by those by those prohibitions the sexual prohibitions which are positive violations like for example marrying an Egyptian woman only in the third generation after her conversion how do we know that that is also from hey ara so the gemar says in the top of fifty five b we're going to learn that out from asya bia bia. Again, we learned that out from a verse, Bia Bia. The Gemara says, Yivama was shook me now. And how do we know that the case of where if a person is uh, with a woman who's supposed to, who's supposed to have Yibum with her and, and instead he, this other man from the marketplace has Yibum with, has a Bia with her. How do we know that that's also from Hayara? Ilaman Damar Lav Lav. According to the one who says it's a regular prohibition, prohibition. Ilaman Damar Say, according to the one who says a positive commandment, uh, El Yivama, and according to the one who's Ilman Damar, I say, I say, it's a positive commandment. So what's the question? Yevavam or Yavam? Minoan. How do we know? How do we know a Yevama is that Yibam takes place just with Hayara? That's our question now. How do we know that Yibam takes place just with Hayara? Umar says, the Asya, Bia, Bia, Bia. That's only now from Bia, Bia. So Umar says, how do we know Isha Labawa? How do we know that a woman and a man who are getting married, how do we know that that marriage can be consummated just with Hayara? That doesn't need the complete sexual act. Just with Hayara is enough. So the Gemara says, Asya Kicha Kicha. We learn now from the word Kicha, which appears by marriage and also appears by the prohibitions of Karis. So the Gemara says, Amarachma, Amarava, Lamui, the cause of Rahmana, Sheikh Lazar, Bashif Lacharufa. And Sheikh Lazar Ba'esh says, we seen, we've seen why it says that we had said, the reason why it says Sheikh Lazar seed by a man who is adulterous with a Canaanite slave means to say, to teach us that, that you need complete the complete sexual act. And Sheikh Lazar Ba'esh says, Ish, so why does it also say by an Ish's Ish, which implies that also by a regular married woman, you would need the complete sexual act. But we learned that since that's a Kari's penalty, it should be with Hayara. So Gemara says, and also Sheikh Vazera Basota. And why does it say this term of, of seed also by Sota? So Gemara says, well, the Shifcha Harufa could The reason why it says it by Shifcha Harufa, we already said, is to say that, um, that you're only liable if you have complete sexual act by the Shifcha Harufa. But by a married woman, why does it say the word seed? It's to teach us the Ashes Ish, Prakham Hashem It's to teach us. Um, I think I might have said this wrong if I said this on my podcast. I, I maybe read it too quickly, but it's to teach us that you're not liable for married women if you are mishamish when mace. It doesn't mean here that the man is dead. It means that the mace is a euphemism for his for his male member. If he's with the married woman, but his male member is is limp, then he does not then then he's going to tell us that he's not liable because he doesn't have seed. So that's what it's teaching us. So Gemara says, Hani Well, this teaches us, this is only good according to the opinion that says, if, you're, if you uh, have the relations with a, with a, with a member that is mace, that is, that is quote unquote dead, that you're exempt. Elamanda Amar, but according to the opinion that you're liable, that if the, if the member is mace, Maiko Mamer. No, it's to tell us that if she is dead, if she is dead, if the, ma- if the married woman herself is dead, that you are not liable. The Saga Da'etachmina, you might have thought to say, means to say that since after her death, the Torah still refers to, refers to her as She'ero, as it says, you're allowed to be tamay for your wife. I might have said if you're with a woman who was married and then she just died and you're with her after she's dead, you might be liable. For the fact that it says, Sheikh uh, Lazar, you're not liable. Okay. So a sota, why does it say Sheikh Lazar by the sota? Like we learned, Sheikh Lazar, it teaches us 
Uh, it says in the Brisa that by a sota means shefazera, you're, you're liable if there's uh, shefazera, but not if you're davar achar. What's davar achar? Amar Rav Sheish is prat le shakine la. So uh, it, it comes to say that if you warn her against being with a man, shaloka darka, we define this as 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 anal intercourse. So there, if you warned her for that, uh, if you warned your wife that you're not allowed to be with this man, shaloka darka, then we're going. To the, it's telling us. Uh, then it's not the law of the Sota woman, if that was the warning. Like if you warned her you're not allowed to be with this man, then she was secluded with him, you're still allowed to be married to her. Armale Rava, I mean, say you gave her the wrong warning. So Rava says, but no, we learned it out in the Ish We learned it out from the verse that says that you met, that that you if he warned him to, he has to be the warning that he's not allowed to be with her like a normal place of pregnancy. Well, it comes to exclude where you warn her that you're just that you're not that she's not allowed to be with this man, which means that they have like physical contact of their limbs, but they don't have the actual intercourse. So Amoy Abaye, of course, Abaye says we don't need a verse to teach us that. That's rude behavior, but it's not the sexual intercourse. So El Abaye, so Abaye says, Prato Shakinu Abinashika. No where if he warned her that they're not allowed to have nishika. Nishika means kissing. It doesn't mean kissing of the lips. It means that the, the touching of the male and female genitalia, that, but without the actual uh, intercourse, that that's what he warned her about. So that is not the violation. And so therefore, she would still be permitted to her husband. Then. So Gmar says, Hani, Humanda, Amar. Well, that's only good according to the position that says, Ha'ara, that when it comes to Ha'ara, that what is Ha'ara, this initial sexual act to Ha'chnas and Satara. This, I apologize, this is overly explicit, but that's referring to the insertion of the crown, of the corona of the man. Elamanda Amar Zunashika. But according to the position that the Ha'ara, the initiation of the sexual act, refers to just Nishika, this, this kissing of the genitalia, my eco mamer, what would he understand? Because isn't that liability? Ela Olam, the Shekinala Derach Evarm. So he warned her, and now I to be with him, Derach Evarm, just even just the limbs touching. The Itzrich, and we still need that warning. The Salgadai, the Hamina, the Beta, the Baltar, Mana. And you might have thought that the Sota woman, this adulterous woman, it depends upon what the husband objects to. And the husband objects to it. And so therefore, she's not allowed to be with him. Kamash Malan. No, even though that's what he objected to, that's not the violation of the sexual act. And so therefore, the, the biblical prohibition. And so therefore, if he warned her about that, it's not considered a warning. Amr Shmuel. So Shmuel says, hey, Ara Zunashika. When the, when the Torah talks about the, the biblical pro- violation, of the Karis penalties, it begins with Ara. that refers to the, the kissing of the genitalia. If the person puts his finger on his mouth, for sure there's going to be some indentation of the flesh there. So it's impossible to have the contact of the genitalia without some, indent, some, some uh, indentation or penetration. He says, indeed, by a shifla harufa, by this Canaanite slave, it's the insertion of this is the insertion of the corona. Master Rav Sheshes, Rav Sheshes says, it says in the Braisa, he challenges shifla Sarah, enochayev ela bias hameiru. You're only liable if you have um, the the bia, the intercourse of meruk, and my love meruk, isn't that the git, isn't that the member, not just the corona? The Mar says, no, meruk atar, and it refers to the crown, that's where there's the liability. Ki asar avdimi amar av yochanan ha'ara zulach nasas atar. He says, ha'ara is the insertion of the crown. Amar lei v'arav bar barachana lo amar hachi. So he says, but didn't Rav Barachani not say this? Amar lo o iu shakrai or ane shakrai. So, so, one of us is not telling the truth. Kiyasa Rabin, when Rabin came, So he says, Ha'ara is the insertion of the crown. And the Gemara says, So is he also arguing on Shmuel, who says in the Shika is the Ha'ara? The Gemara says, well, from the initial uh, touching of the genitalia until the insertion of the crown, all that is called Ha'ara. So he's not necessarily arguing with, with uh, Shmuel, and we'll just finish this discussion. The Kiyasar Shmuel Bar Yehuda Amr Rabbi Yochanan Ara Zu Achnas Natara Ara is the insertion of the Atara. 
Ugmar Bia, Mar Bia Mamish. And when they say completion of the Bia, that's the actual Bia. Mikan Ve'elech, Enu El Neshika, Upatar El Paladishimo. But earlier than that is just called Neshika, and you're exempt. It's just the touching, and this argues with Shmuel, but Shmuel says that any Neshika is really, is really actually, is really actually uh, uh, Ha'ara. Okay, if there's any questions, I'm happy to address these questions.